is Michelle Winbush, and I'm coming to you all the way from the crab capital of the world, Baltimore, Maryland. And today, I'm going to pay tribute to my home state and make a hot and creamy crab dip in a sourdough bread bowl. Now, I've been making this recipe for about 10 years, and I do a lot of cooking, entertaining, and catering. And this, by far, is my most requested dish. I've made it for tailgate parties, family reunions, anniversaries, baby showers, bridal showers. I don't think there's an event that has not seen this dip. And when I first started making it, I honestly thought that only adults would enjoy this dip. But then came Chloe. And Chloe's my five-year-old daughter, and she absolutely loves this dip. And she is one tough cookie, so you know it's got to be good. Now, I could go on forever telling you about how wonderful this dip is, but I have a hungry group outside waiting to dig in, so let's get started. Now, since I've been making this dip for a long time, I usually don't have to follow the recipe to a T, but what I usually do is lay out all of my ingredients before I get started so that I don't forget to add something in as I'm going along. And our first ingredient today is 12 ounces of the Philadelphia Regular Brick Cream Cheese, which I've softened in the microwave for about two minutes. And to the cream cheese, we're going to add in two tablespoons of milk and two tablespoons of finely diced onion. Now for all you onion haters out there, yes, you can leave out the onion, but because I dice it so fine, I really don't even think you're going to know that it's in the dip. It's really just there to enhance the flavor, and there's not enough to overpower the dip, so I would recommend just including it. Now our next two ingredients are a half a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce and a half a teaspoon of hot sauce. Then we're going to add in a half a teaspoon of Dijon mustard, and the last wet ingredient we're going to add before we get to the dry ingredients and the spices is a teaspoon of Kraft Creamy Horseradish Sauce. Now, I learned the hard way that this is a key ingredient. Because one time I was invited to a Super Bowl party and I was asked to bring my crab dip and it was sort of a last minute request and I didn't have the horseradish sauce on hand, so instead I used regular horseradish. And it completely changed the flavor of the dip. And I do not mean that in a good way. So now I try to make sure I always have it on hand so that I don't run into that issue again. Now usually by this time, little Miss Chloe has asked me at least a thousand times if she can help with, the dip, with this recipe. And since she loves to shake up the spices and she loves to cook, I usually let her join in about this time. Now the first couple of ingredients that I usually let Chloe help me with are a half teaspoon of salt and a half teaspoon of dry mustard and a half teaspoon of paprika and a half of a teaspoon of Old Bay seasoning. Now usually about this time you need to give it another really good stir. And since Chloe's usually helping me out, she's the one who does the stirring, and I'm the one who's cleaning up all of her splatter. So I'm going to give it a good stir. But while I do that, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Old Bay seasoning. Now, Old Bay is made here in Maryland, and I would bet that every restaurant in Maryland and every household in Maryland has a can of Old Bay sitting on a shelf somewhere. But that is not the case outside of Maryland. I was traveling one time and I went to a seafood restaurant and I asked the waiter for some Old Bay to go along with my seafood and the waiter looked at me like I had two heads. So if you don't have Old Bay in your grocery store and you don't feel like going online to order it, you could always substitute with a different seafood seasoning and I'm sure the dip will come out just fine. So I think I've got it stirred up pretty well and our next ingredient is the fresh jumbo lump crab meat. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I am here in the crab capital of the world, so people would probably gasp if I said I didn't use Maryland fresh crab meat. Maryland crab meat is very sweet, it's got a nice flavor, and it has a nice soft texture. 
but it's not always in season. So sometimes I'll use pasteurized jumbo lump crab meat made by chicken in the sea or probably Phillips. What I don't recommend using is imitation crab meat or the canned crab meat that you find. I think it's in the, in the aisle next to the canned tuna. Those kinds of crab meat really change the texture and flavor of this dip and they really turn it into a completely different recipe. So to the extent that you can, try to get the fresh or the pasteurized crab meat. And before you add it into the dip, and this is a pound that we have here, you want to make sure you pick through and get out all the shells and all the cartilage because when your guests get their first bite of this dip, you want them to bite into a nice, sweet, creamy lump of crab meat and you do not want the shells and cartilage to get in their way. So make sure you take care of that step before you add it in. And that leads me to my next point. When you do add in this crab meat, you want to make sure you do it very carefully and very gently. You do not want to break up these nice creamy lumps of crab meat. So I'm going to show you how I do that. And once you fold it in, you're going to transfer this dip to a 8x8 eight eight Pyrex dish, which you've prepared with your cooking spray. And then you're going to bake it for about 20 to 25 minutes in an oven set to 375 degrees. Now once you take your crab dip out of the oven, you're going to transfer it to your sourdough bread bowl. Now the sourdough bread bowl that I have here, I got at my local grocery store. And if your local grocery store doesn't carry it in the bakery section, you could probably try one of the chain bakeries like Panera Bread, or Great Harvest Bakery, and there's really no magic to prepping the bread bowl. You really just want to cut off a little of the top, of this, as I've done here, and then what you want to scoop out most of the insides. Now, not all of it, because you don't want your dip to soak through and sort of bake, break through the bottom of the bread. And then you're going to sprinkle some additional Old Bay and paprika on top, like I've done here, because we're going to pop it back in the oven for a few minutes, and our goal at that point is to get this bread bowl nice and crusty, and we want to give it a nice golden brown color. So once you've done that, you're going to transfer it to the oven, and you're going to bake it for an additional 15 minutes. Now once you remove your bread bowl from the oven, your crab dip really is ready to be served. But before I finish up, I'm going to go over a few options for serving this dip. Now, if you're having more of an upscale event, like a bridal shower or maybe a small evening cocktail party, you could use a footed cake plate, and you could put a clear glass dish in the center and put your dip inside and serve it with sliced French baguette. If you're having a larger event, maybe a family reunion, or I catered a 100-person tailgate party one time and used a large chafing dish and either tripled or quadrupled the recipe so that there was enough for everyone. And I just serve the bread or crackers on the side. My all-time favorite way to serve this dip is in the bread bowl, as I've done here. And when I serve it this way, I usually serve it on a flat sort of platter or cake plate. And I'll serve it with sliced French baguette or my husband Chauncey. He prefers wheat thins because he thinks they're much sturdier than the French baguette. And he wants to get a nice big chunk of crab meat when he dips into there. You could also serve it with crackers or tortilla chips. Um, my son Chase, who's six years old, could care less about the dip. All he wants are the wheat thins and the crackers. He is not a crab dip lover yet, but we're still working on him. So as I mentioned earlier, I have got a hungry crowd waiting outside for me, and I'm sure they're ready to knock down the door. So I want to thank you for stopping by, and I hope you enjoy this dip as much as I do. Have a great day.